Hello everyone, lesson number four. Yeah, we're in a very happy week, I would say. So last weekend, there was a very nice Congress uh, in uh, Mexico. If you're uh, following uh, the broadcast of the Congresses, which is pretty cool. And this uh, weekend, there is uh, the annual Congress in New Jersey, which is going to be a huge event in North America. And so I'm, I hope that you follow that as well. Okay, so uh, good evening, good morning, wherever you are in the world. Uh, we're at lesson number four, article the freedom. We've got some questions which I'll relate to in a second. Uh, and al already Blake, I haven't even started saying hello and Blake already has questions. Very nice. Okay, so uh, let's do a short review of what we've talked last time or in the previous three lessons. So Bar Salaam actually asks, is there free choice? Meaning if we see that everything is uh, managed by uh, strict laws and that we are managed either from inside or from the outside, meaning either by uh, our genetics, our education, our environment, uh, the way that we act, the fact that we uh, must, as a will to receive, maximize a uh, maximize uh, pleasure and minimize pain uh, and even the question of what is pleasure is being uh, implanted and imprinted in us according to the society we are in uh, and our in natural tendencies that we've got from uh, previous generations then the question st uh, stands is there any free choice uh, I think it was uh, Kittel, the name of uh, a Belgian statistic, statistic guy that uh, tried to find the uh, laws in society and he actually uh, did a lot of statistics and a lot of reports and he was the first to say that uh, a thief in a courthouse needs to say that needs to say to the judge that it's not him, it's the society. Okay, so that was the, like the first uh, I think in that time Comte came up with the phrase of sociology. Am I pronouncing it right? I don't know. Anyway, it's not so important that I look it up in Google now, how to pronounce it because I want to go back to the lesson. So, uh, Bala Suram tries to explain that and he's trying to, to go into the question of free choice by explaining that nothing comes existence from absence. We are all just a cause uh, or a result of our circumstances and the chain that led us to the point we're at. And we can be divided just like every other emergent phenomena. Uh, we can be described by four factors or reasons that he called. And so the first one is, uh, how did they call it in English? Ah, source, yes. So the first one is the source. The second one is the cause and effect, which I drew like this instead of writing it, it's easier for me. Cause and effect that are unchanging and relate to the source, meaning that each source has its own cause and effect that don't change, that if this source develop, this is the different forms it takes upon itself in the process and it doesn't change. Just like with the example with the wheat, so there is something that is called the wheat, even if it's rotten, even if it's uh, blooming, it is still called the wheat. And uh, there is a cause and effect chain that doesn't uh, cha change the shapes of it, that uh, from a, a source which is a wheat cannot come out, or, any of, or an elephant or whatever. And if it will develop, in, it will develop in that uh, sequence, and there is the changing uh, cause and effect that are related to the source but are only, also changing by external uh, forces that operate on the source. And this is like with the wheat, it's a change in quantity and quality uh, according to the minerals, the salt, the water, and there are the external things that also have their cause and effect. Like the weather, if we take the wheat, or like, uh, I don't know, the financial system, if we take a person. And these things uh, have their own way of conduct, okay? So that's more or less what we've talked about. Also, what we've talked about, let me remind myself. 
Ah, yes, we said that the environment can influence it in quality and quantity, the, that they are hereditary. Huh? I said it right the first time. I remember something from last time. Hereditary possessions that are being given to the source. So it doesn't really matter if, uh, if let's say, if this is the first factor, this second, third, fourth. So it doesn't really matter if the second or the third factor uh, comes from a uh, like uh, herit her hereditary uh, information, I don't know if you can say that, meaning it comes from birth uh, imprinted inside, as we saw, as we saw that Barcelona says that what comes to the previous generation as experience or knowledge or whatever comes in the, in the next generation or the next state, if we're talking about a one lifetime and we're talking about states, it doesn't really matter. Or we're talking about the gen about uh, all of the human existence, and then we're talking about generation. It's the same because it's the same uh, uh, principle. But what comes in intellect or in experience in one generation, in the next one, is already imprinted as instincts, uh, and it just comes naturally. Like I don't know, you take a third-year-old on a mobile phone, and he's much natural than a 70-year-old needing to do something with the phone or other technology or whatever. Also, uh, we've talked about the influence of the environment. Yes, uh, not something... Uh, ta -ta -ta. Okay, and now, ah, yeah, and now we're going to talk about a habit, okay, which is one of the one of the strongest methods to change one's uh, action or one's a perception or whatever a habit it's very strong because it takes limitation of time and space and wires them into uh, the level of information okay but before we go into that we have some questions yay so first of all questions from last time not so related to the topic but still i'm going to answer that guilehem i hope i pronounced your name right guilehem kohelo Coelho, well, I hope, Guilherme, okay. I'm reading the power of subconscious mind, uh, but he says everything starts with the correct thought, and he says we can control our thoughts for the good. But Kabbalah says we cannot control our thoughts, and we need to correct our desire. Is, is it possible that both would be true? This is a very good question, okay? Because actually Kabbalah says, hey, you know, if you take the if we are will to receive, we want to maximize pleasure, we want to minimize pain, right? And then we have this uh, intellect. I don't know. Let's say this is a brain. Whatever. Uh, you know what? This is really, really a bad drawing. How do you draw a brain anyway? I don't know. Let's say that this is a brain. So. If you have a great desire and you have a lot of limitations, because if you have a great desire and you're just being born into abundance, then there is no pr problem. But if you have a big desire and you have a lot of limitation, you need a very sophisticated brain, because you need a tool that will help you uh, fulfill your, your uh, desires. And if you don't want a lot, then, you know, more thoughts, more, wor more worries, uh, more suffering, and, you know, there is a sentence in Hebrew, it's from Kohelet, from, um, how do you say Kohelet in English? How do you say this sentence? This is Kohelet, oh, Kohelet in English. Kohelet in English, the words of Kohelet. Ah, I don't know, they say Kohelet. Kohelet. <laughs> there is no translation. Ah, here it is. Ecclesiastes. I don't know even how to pronounce that. Okay, again to Google, I thought maybe today I'll manage without Google translate, but I don't. Ecclesiastes. 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 Okay, this is good. So there is a sentence there that the more uh, reason, the more worries. Okay, the more, the more intellect, the more pain. I don't know how they translate that. Maybe I can try that in Google, but it will be too much, right? Let's see if it will give us something in English. 
A mind wielding aching man. What? Well, it doesn't really work. No, there is no such sentence. Okay, so Google is completely uh, <laughs> gibberishing us to death. Whatever. Anyway, uh, so if I don't want a lot, then I don't need a big brain, right? It's better not to know a lot. Just live life, be happy, that's it. You know, no drugs, no alcohol, everything is good. Now, uh, but if but if you want more, you need a bigger intellect, okay? Now back to your question, Guillermo. Uh, the question is, can you change your thoughts? Okay, so we saw that I cannot change my desire. I must maximize, maxi get the most of pleasure I can get and the less of pain. And also the question, what is pleasure, is being uh, determined to me by society, okay? So I'm already programmed if I see pleasure in cannibalism or in politics or in uh, sex or in, uh, I don't know what, or in uh, uh, money. So, and my thoughts are according to the desires, yes, because I need to f fulfill myself. Now, all these self-help books about changing your thoughts, uh, does it work? No, it doesn't, because uh, you can actually cannot control your thoughts, they are like a, a result of your desire. But, and this is very important, Kabbalah says that even the desire you cannot change, the only thing you can change later on is the intention. Meaning, do you want to receive in order to fulfill yourself, or do you want to uh, receive in order to give contentment to the Creator, to be similar to the Creator, in the Asian with the Creator. Changing the intention actually changes not all of your thoughts, but all of your perception of reality. This is the difference between corporal reality and spiritual reality, the change in the intention, okay? Now, can you do external changes that will help you come into internal changes? This is very important. Follow me. Uh, not that you change your thoughts and if I think good, it will be good, but if I'll do external changes upon myself, as a result from that, internal things in me will change. And in that, yes, you can play also. You don't really change your thoughts, but you play like you have other thoughts. This is very important, the principle of play. We'll see that also today with the habit thing, that we're taking upon ourselves like artificial actions on the externally in order to change the internality. Okay? Okay. Good. So that was a Gehilma question. Now, second question. Uh, Kapsik is asking, uh, Hello, in one of Bala Sulam letters he says, If I don't do it for myself, who will help me? And after I have achieved what I planned, I must say everything came from the Creator. And the questions are, What will remind me or how will I keep reminding myself in the end that it will all come from the Creator? What is the tricks that Kabbal Kabbalists do? Kabbalist understands that there is either him or the environment, as we see now what I have inside, or something external. If I cannot control myself, because I know that my nature in default will always make me forget about the Creator and feel that I'm working, I'm the, mid, I'm the operating force in reality, I think, I feel, I decide, I operate, I am the result, I am the, the cause, and I want uh, to come into a reality in which I reveal an external force that he's the one that operates, he's the cause, he's the goal, he brings me all the thoughts and all the sensations, then I need to have some kind of external uh, mechanism that will remind me of that. That is called a society or a ten in Kabbalah. And do they really believe that everything comes from the Creator? It's not about believing, uh, it's about feeling. Either you feel a reality in which you don't feel the Creator, and you feel just yourself, or you feel a reality, and you live a reality in which you just feel the Creator, and not yourself. It's one of two. How do they convince themselves? Again, it's not about convincing. It's not some kind of intellect uh, debate. It's about either you feel it or you don't feel it. Just like you go outside, you feel if it's cold or hot. You don't need to think about it. Or if your back hurts, then your body changes position. You don't need to think about it. You just leave it. Okay, wow, so many questions today. We won't get to the lesson. Blake, is it okay to argue the Creator when we experience an intense descent? You can talk to the Creator all the time, it's always good. Is there going to be a Congress in Denver, Colorado? I don't have a clue. Usually the annual Congress is in New Jersey. 
Maybe if you invite the guys, maybe they'll go to Denver as well. How are you? I'm okay, thank you. I wanted to ask, why today on Lag Baoma is it significant day to pray? Ah, uh, no, actually, you're trying to, to ask about our, uh, our events on the calendar actually have a special meaning or special spiritual force or whatever. Well, they don't, they just symbolize something, so... I can be in a state of Lag Baomer. This is not the topic of the lesson, but all the Jewish holidays are manifestations or symbols of ex of internal work a person needs to go through. And I can be in a state that is called Shabbat on Monday. I can be in a state that is called the uh, Pesach on Lag Baomer. So it doesn't really matter. Lauren saying that they also say intelligent people are more prone to depression. Right, because why are they intelligent? You know, if you if you take a very, you can say that a, that a very good students or very famous actors they are prone to depressions or drugs. But you can say the the, the opposite, because they had a huge desire, it pushed them to be a famous actor or to be a very good student. And this desire, because it's egoistic, they cannot fulfill that. So when they uh, understand that uh, this extra fame or extra knowledge or extra money doesn't really fulfill them, they get double the depression. Uh, uh, trying to control your thoughts is like playing pop the whistle, whatever. I don't know what's pop the whistle. Maybe I know it, but in Hebrew. Pop the whistle, whatever. Okay. Uh, good evening to Vince, to draw. Uh, Lorena is listening from Australia. That's cool. What time is it in Australia, anyway? Good evening from Mexico. Wow, there was an amazing congress in Mexico. I tried to uh, convince my friends to go together to South America for a while, but they won't do that. So I guess our work is in Israel at the moment. But maybe once we'll go to South America. It was such a great congress. I think that there is such a burning heart there and a, a big spiritual potential. Okay, so where were we? Yeah. We haven't started today's lesson. Okay, so here we're on page 382. If you're reading it on the internet, the article, the, P, the Freedom, you have also a link in the description, and we're on the title, Habit Turns to Second Nature. The third reason is a conduct of direct cause and effect which affect the source and change it. Okay, so this is a very cool thing, that you can actually change your source. This is what the questions we had from uh, uh, Guilmo and Kapsik. Uh, because the inherited tendency in men have become concepts due to the environment, they operate in the same direction that these concepts define. For example, a man of frugal nature in whom the tendency of stinginess, <laughs> again, stinginess has been turned into a concept through the environment perceives fr fragile fr Frugality or fragility? Uh, okay, where is it? My Google when I need it. Frugality. 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 Okay, frugality. Say that. Frugality. Perceives frugality through some reasonable definition. Okay, so. Uh, What's the, what, what happens here actually? Because we are living in a world of action and our uh, source with the concept that we developed and the conceptual uh, uh, shapes need to manifest somehow in the world of action, then by changing the actions sometimes, and it's very important if it's been done consciously or not, by changing the actions, sometimes you can change the uh, source. Okay, meaning the concept. This is a very delicate point. Uh, on the contrary, if you just do action, nothing change. If you just do it unconsciously. Let, let, let us assume that with this conduct, he protects himself from needing others. Thus, he has acquired a scale of food a scale for frugality, and when that fear is absent, he can waive it. Thus, he has substantially changed for the better from the ten tendency he had inherited from his forefathers, because now he can actually change somehow. 
and sometimes one manages to completely uproot a bad tendency. This is done by a habit, which is has the ability to become a second nature. Okay, this is what's so strong in religion, because religion actually is a system of habits uh, that al uh, allowed humanity to go through a tremendous change. So you see one generation that really resists a religion of some sort, that they need to be slaughtered in blood to uh, accept upon them a religion, and the second generation that comes out of them already become a fanatic uh, believer because it's such a, a strong system of habits, okay? In that, the strength of man is greater than that of a plant, for wheat can change only in its private part, whereas man has the ability to change through the cause and effect of the environment, even in the general parts, that is to completely invert a tendency and uproot it to its opposite, okay? So we, through operating in a habit in a society, can actually uh, completely change our, uh, pro our framework, like a, a, like a, not framework, like a, like our, our uh, internal software, you know, like there is, like hardware and software, no, but there is a hardware and you say not hardware, you say, uh, how do you say like tukhna? Uh, what it will do a software, I guess, but they don't. Do. Ah. There is no better word than software. There is hardware and there is software. Ah, whatever. Yeah, I knew it will give me software. Uh, okay, so you, you you're not changing the hardware. You're just changing, let, let's say, your operating system. Okay, uh, through habits. Okay, so what is so strong about habits? So, because we live in a world of action, and in this world we have time and space, so through changing our actions in time and space, we can actually change the way of thought or, or our conduct or some uh, qualities if we do that uh, consciously in many cases. Sometimes also unconsciously, but subconsciously, but in most cases it's consciously. Okay, so what is a habit? So we know from modern science that if you take upon yourself, like the best is to work with the calendar because the calendar frames time and space. So you have a day, you have a week, so you take a, a, a certain slice of time and you just uh, repeat it every day. That's, again, ju just like religion. Or every week, or every month, or every year, like holidays that I was being asked about just now. And by that you con you're changing your action. You're changing your actions, of course, but also your way of thought, okay? So this is a very strong tool. Okay, now uh, let's continue. External, oh, sorry. External factors. The fourth reason is a conduct of cause and effect that affects the source by things that are completely alien to it and operates on it from the outside. This means that these things are not at all related to the source growth conduct to affect it directly, but rather operate indirectly. Okay, So even a habit or working with the environment in order to change myself through actions or whatever, it's also related to my uh, uh, to to my source, okay? So I determine which habits I want, or what I want to change, or which quality I go according to this uh, pleasure and pain program uh, or ways that I was giving uh, and that I internalized somehow or I was born with, okay? So so there's a question: how much there is free choice there? Because also the habits and what I want to change is also a result. And, and so there are external factors that has no connection to the region, to the source at all. For example, example, monetary issues, burdens, or the winds have their own complete slow and gradual order of states by way of cause and effect and change men's concept for better or for worse. Thus, I have set up the four natural factor, factors that each thought and idea 
that appears in us is but their fruits. And even if one were to sit and contemplate something all day long, he will not be able to add or to alter what those four factors give him. Any addition he can add is in the quantity, whether a great intellect or a small one, but in the quality he cannot add one bit. This is because they are the ones that compl completely determine the nature and shape of the idea and the conclusion without asking our opinion. Thus we are at the hands of these four factors as clay in the hands of a potter. Okay, and next title is free choice. So that's next lesson. So we saw that there is the habit as a tool that we engage with uh, in the environment and there are the external forces that has, have nothing to do with us. Good. Okay, now let's see if we have more questions. Uh, okay. Chuka cheese. Chuka cheeses. What's chuka cheeses? Okay. Sorry, Blake. This is like, you see, that's part of the environment of where you've been grown. Chuka cheese. Okay, now I see what a chuka cheese is. Chuck cheeses. I hope I pronounced it correctly. So it's like Family Entertainment Center Company. Okay, and this... Ah, you relate to that game. Okay. So... What was the name of the game? Something with the weasel, no? Uh, yeah, Bob the weasel. What? It's like with this uh, thing that jumps out and you need to bang it with like a hammer or something. Bob the weasel. On, on Google I just get uh, someone plays the piano. Yeah, I think I was right. Yeah, okay, now I found a video. Yeah, I found a video. Yeah, I guess it's this game, right? That something jumps. Okay. Okay, I got you. Yeah, I know this game. Good. Uh, okay, why do bad tendency that I felt had been completely corrected came back as seemingly completely uncorrected? Because <laughs> you didn't correct them. Is there ever a point where a desire is permanently corrected without us having to anticipate? F yeah, in, spirit in spirituality, every advancement in the ladder is about correcting the previous state. And then you correct that and you attain a new level. Okay, no more questions. Lorena didn't say where she's from. Uh, uh, sorry, no, wh what is the time in Australia? Maybe she went to sleep already. Although maybe it's morning there. What time is it? Oh, you know what? I'll just check it. I'll just do local time Sydney. Yeah, so it's the middle of the day. Okay, so she probably went back to work or something. Okay, so that's it about today. So today we've talked about a habit as a tool for change and also the external forces and we answered many questions. And next lesson, uh, hopefully Monday, we will discuss finally free choice. So, so thank you for being with me and see you next time. Bye-bye.